That's awesome. I feel like it's my birthday. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, what a nice rendition of That's Good for Footy and, uh, you know, keep the applause going because these two are pretty excited to get out here and meet you as well. Uh, these are the only live and interactive footy panel shows going around where the fans get to meet the players and the players get to meet the fans. There's other people out there that suggest that's what happens at their shows, but it don't. It ain't. It all here. It all here. Um, you'll get photos with the boys a little bit later on, and uh, you'll get your opportunity to. They just uh, they showed me a couple of things they brought along tonight, and I think you're going to be interested when they bring them out. Um, so keep that. That's a little bit on. Keep up your sleeve for later on. Um, these shows are for the passionate supporters. I presume that's you guys. <laughs> yeah, okay. Some of you. All right. Um, this is, as I said, this is where the players. You'll get to see them in a little bit of a different light. Who wants to meet them? Yeah. yeah good. All right. Let's see how we go there. Now, first panellist, he was born on the 9th of January in 1997. He's played a total of 96 games and he's kicked a total of 47 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2016. When he plays for the Western Bulldogs Football Club, he wears a number five on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Josh Dunkley. Mine's got to be changed because it says come out snarling. He didn't come out snarling. <laughs> he come out smiling and all the girls in the room just went, oh. Hey, you little sweet. Good to see you, mate. You're looking really well. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's good to be here. Finally back, obviously, with crowds and yeah. everything and oh. getting back to some normality, mate. It's oh, good. Isn't it good? It's so good to see faces again. Wonderful to be back at the shows. Uh, nice to have him here. Let's not take too long because the other guy's out the back and he'll be wanting to get out here and meet you too. He's our second panellist. He was born on the 30th of November in 1999. He played a total, he's played a total of 81 games and he's kicked 102 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2018 when he plays for the Western Football Club. He wears the number on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Aaron Norton. <laughs> Wonderful, great reception. That was better good. than mine, I reckon. <laughs> we need to get, let Josh go out and come back again. Uh, that was fantastic. Really, uh, welcome to your first That's Good for Footy panel show. Great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for that reception. It was awesome and, yeah, good beer. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, we're not going to muck around. We want to get into it because we've got a lot to get through tonight. We want to get into our first couple of segments. So we're going to do it straight from the top. We're going to talk about the winners from round three. We're going to go into the tips and we're going to go into what the boys are, really want to talk about is the game that's coming up this weekend. So I'm just going to go into it, um, the winners from round three, boy, and I'm going to talk about some certain little key things that, that I, I, you know, I was drawing attention to. So we'll go through it. Frio defeated West Coast by 55. Nobody here cares. Um, the Saints defeated the Tigers by 33. Max King with four, which was fabulous for him. The Blues just got over the line yeah. in, in a thriller. Um, yes, congratulations. Um, to the Hawks by one. The Blues are three and zero, and we find um, that Hawthorne are not quite the family club that we thought they were. There could be a bit going on there as well. Um, Brisbane trampled the Roos, winning by 108 points. Plenty to go on for North for them to sort out. Uh, the Pies went down to the Cats after being up by over five goals to only lose by 13. That was a bit of a shock, I think, for, uh, well, the Pies supporters more than anything. Uh, Joel Selwood broke the game's record holder as captain, which was fantastic. That really does deserve, like, well done, Joel. I know he's not everyone's favourite, but um, for the Geelong fans, I know he is, and he's a bloody champion. Uh, but I wanted to allude to the fact that Jezza kicked six in a rampaging finish for the Cats. Now, I've spoken about two forwards there. One of them was Max King, the other was, obviously, um, Jeremy Cameron, which is great because the forwards are starting to have an impact, aren't they? Right? And that's what we want to get to because we want to delve into that a little bit later. Uh, GWS defeated Gold Coast by 26. You thought you didn't care about Freo and West Coast. Um, Adelaide defeated Port in the showdown by four and the game produced a hero in Dawson with an after the siren kick, which is everyone's, you know, childhood ambition. Uh, Melbourne got across the line against the Bombers in a pretty scrappy game of football, I must say, by 29. That's the results from uh, the round three action. We get into the ladder very quickly. Uh, Brisbane sitting on top, Melbourne in second, Carlton third. 
Where's that guy again? He's over there. He's still, yeah, all right, well done. Uh, Hawthorne in fourth, uh, Frio in uh, fifth, Collingwood sixth, seventh is Geelong, and then Sydney Swans round out the eight. Uh, Western Bulldogs sitting in twelfth. Couple of hard games to start, mate. Doesn't uh, it's only early. Yeah, let's say that. There you go. All right, good, good. Moving right along. That's the ladder. All right. Uh, let's get into round four. Uh, Thursday, 7th of April, Port versus Melbourne, uh, which is Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. 7-10, that game is in Adelaide. Friday, the 8th of April, Geelong versus Brisbane, which is at GMHBA Stadium. Sydney versus North um, at the SCG. Collingwood versus West Coast at Marvel. Frio versus GWS at Optus. Richmond versus Western Bulldogs, 7.25 at the MCG on Saturday night, the 9th of April. We'll go into that one. Essendon versus Adelaide, 1.10 at Marvel. Hawthorne versus St Kilda, 3.20 at the MCG. Gold Coast versus Colton, 4.10 at Metricon. Let's go back over those very quickly. Just give us your tips on what you think here. Port Adelaide versus Melbourne in, in Adelaide. Melbourne, for sure. Yep. I'm going to give Port. Ooh, OK. Geelong versus Brisbane at GMA HBA Stadium, or as we like to call it, Alphabet Stadium. Geelong. Geelong? Brisbane for me. Ooh, OK. That should be a cracker game, that one, I reckon. Um, Sydney versus North at the SCG? Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> yeah, t- too easy. <laughs> you could go to sleep and watch that one. Um, Collingwood versus West Coast at Marvel? Pies. Yeah, Pies. Good. Frio versus GWS, Optus? Frio for me. Ooh, yeah, Frio. Frio. Um, we'll jump to uh, Essendon versus Adelaide at Marvel? Dons. Yeah, Essendon, we got on the board. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Hawthorne versus St Kilda at the G? Hawthorne. Yeah. I'll go St Kilda. Ooh, OK. And Gold Coast versus Carlton? <laughs> Blues. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well done. All right, that's our tips. Uh, the big game that we all want to talk about, though, is coming up Richmond versus Western Bulldogs, 7.25 at the MCG. We'll get into this in this segment. It's called Tell Me More. <laughs> All right, so each week what I do here is I ask the panellists to give us their thoughts and opinions on things happening both in and around football. We're not trying to make or break the news here. Um, we just want to get your insight, so let's do it. You guys jumped out of the blocks on Thursday night. It was, it was always spoken about by both players and the coach, but how conscious was the effort to make a deliberate impact on the game from the get-go? Going back to Thursday night now, it seems so long ago. Yeah, it has been. A bit of training in between, but... Yeah, obviously their first two games weren't ideal and, um, yeah, I'd be lying to say there wasn't a little bit of pressure to get the first win on the board and um, I think you could just tell, like, pre-game, you sort of know as a player when the team's on and it just felt like that on Thursday and uh, we probably made it a little bit hard for ourselves not kicking too straight, (laughs) but, um, yeah, good to get on the board for the season. I wrote down here, Jamara uh, got your first one on the board, which seemed to really give him and the rest of the team uh, the, electrif- the electrifying start that you wanted. You were all moving and playing with such passion and vigour. That's what came through to me. Yeah, I mean, it was the sole focus of ours and not as though we went away from it in the first two rounds, but to be, or to instigate it, I yep. guess, in a way. And uh, Melbourne took it up to us in round one and then the Blues... We're, we're good in round two, so um, we knew that we you know, had to be up for the task and City's midfield and their, their whole team's really good. So yeah. to come up against someone like them and play the way we did is very, I suppose, impressive and yeah. we, we take full confidence out of that game. Bloody oath, I agree. Uh, mentions, I really like that Tim is bulking up and getting a bit more mongrel about him. It's nice, um, isn't it? Yeah, I liked it. Um, he's aggressive. such a gentle, humble individual, but it is so good to see him be a bit more Andre the Giant-like. Uh, he's such a gentle, uh, he has such a gentle nature, but be careful as he may just heave you over the fence and throw you into the third row. Not quite Tony Lockett or Dustin on Dustin Fletcher, but, you know, like, watch out. Um, Josh, your tackling pressure was excellent. 11 tackles was double your closest opponent. Bloody awesome. I want to bring up a point here because... We all went to school. We all used to get out and have a bit of a kick on the oval at lunchtime and everything. There'd all be, always be that one guy that would just fly through the pack and be taking screamers, right? He sits at the end of the desk here. Is that what it was like f- for you at school? Were you like that at school? Were you always the one that would be at the, the pinnacle, the, the, t- the one taking the specky? Yeah, I think so. I uh, used to love lunchtime, uh, yeah. kicking the footy, but yeah, I used to just sort of creep back and tell everyone, no, go forward, it's not going to kick, kick that far, <laughs> and then just set them up and yeah, just try and take hangers every lunchtime. It was one of the favourite things to do. Uh, I, I, it's just, 
every time I watch you, you just look like you're enjoying yourself so much and you, you really set yourself to, to take those big grabs and it's a great feature of your game. If you were doing that at school, what were you doing running around just bullying everybody, just going, give us your lunch money because tackling everyone. Just tackling everyone. <laughs> throw the ball and just go bang. <laughs> no. No, I actually love marking as well as a kid, so I need, yeah. to, get, I need to do more of it, I reckon. Yeah, good. There you go. Good. Why, I'll why ask Naughty during the week to give me some tips. Yeah. Uh, now, there's something Bulldogs fans, don't tell me this doesn't get your, your lick slipping. Your, um, your mouth watering, right? Um, a forward line consisting of Jamara, Aaron Norton and Marcus Bontempelli. Come on. Jesus, it's so exciting to watch. With Jamara and Aaron flying for a pack mark and then Bont roving the pack, it's beautiful to watch. I just threw that in there because it sounded good. Um, I'll tell you something else I noticed the other night which I really liked. This one. It was the basketball switch flip and do it decoy move. Um, Jamara leads one way, Cordy moves into the corridor blocking any potential opposition player affecting a spoil which in all the confusion frees up Aaron Norton to take an uncontested grab. Yeah, we did actually watch that today at the club. <laughs> we did, it was in the yeah, highlights package. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. in the highlights package at the club. Yeah, oh, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Norton to take an uncontested grab, nice work when it comes off. Am I reading too much into that or is that, is that actually a set play? Oh, I wouldn't say it's a set play. It's just something that we obviously focus on because we've got Naughty down there yeah. and sometimes we can do it for Jamara, sometimes for Bont, as you yeah. mentioned. And, yeah. yeah, it's trying to share the load a little bit because the big fella gets a bit tired out there. <laughs> I just, seriously, fans, I find that so exciting to know that you can see those three down in the forward line and, and when you get that kind of movement going on, I'm the next basketballer myself and I love working around in the key and running forward backwards and across the, the key and then back up to the front and seeing that sort of stuff happen, you guys just pulled it off. It looked like it was a set play, but it came off beautifully. Brilliant. You went on to um, obviously do miss, what you did. Yeah. Did you um, miss? Yeah. Did I miss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why we stop it right there, OK? Um, but uh, doggies, you shut down the corridor and you, uh, made, you made them go wide. This was effective, but then your inaccuracy and did all your good work. Um, there were bloody good sides in here and they were coming at you. It's important to shut down the opposition when they're coming at you like that with scoreboard pressure. The dogs finished up kicking 9-17 for the game, so it's obviously something that was addressed and will be addressed and something you want to change moving forward. But I'll also point out that what they, when they did challenge you, it was good to see individuals like um, Cody step up, and literally he did step up in the third. Uh, he stepped up and over McCartan. Uh, the ball was in dispute on the wing. Bont comes in with his cape flying um, in the wind. He spins, he balks, he gets free. He kicks inside 50, Jamara flies and over the back comes Cody, exciting to watch. He finished up with three but two crucial ones when you needed them. It's like when, you, when I'm watching it on, on live Thursday night, that's the kind of electricity that was being generated and I know that's how you fans would have felt too because it was a really nice win. Less than 50 seconds on the clock, fans were sitting there looking through their fingers. I don't know, you guys weren't paying any attention to that but obviously fans were. Um, you're sitting there looking through your fingers. There's a throw in on the wing. Rucks go at it. The ball comes out to Libba, grabs it, kicks it inside 50. Jamara tries to mark it. As I said, it spills over the back. Vandermeer swoops, but let's stop right there. Because this was, this was classic Marcus Bontempelli. He read the play that well. He didn't go back in. He just kept running towards goal. That's when Nathan just handballs uh, hand it over the top. And uh, obviously, Marcus goes on to seal the game. And it was brilliant. Um, like he's done so many times before, breathe everybody, uh, breathe e easy, everybody. It's done. Now. Now it's done. Any win is a good win, but that felt like a good one, was it? Yeah, it, do it does. I mean, those wins are the ones you want to be involved in. Obviously, we could have put them away a bit earlier, yeah. but... They're extra special when you get those, you know, game-winning goals from Bont and, and Naughty and the likes, and it just brings a, the group together and the whole footy club, I guess, at, a, along with the fans as well, so it's great. Yeah. Aaron, you were brother uh, bookended all night. Um, obviously had both the McCartan boys at nearly every contest. What was that like? Uh, yeah, sorry I'm getting used to having a couple of defenders on me. Um, it's not so nice when the other forwards don't block and they, <laughs> they come flying in with their knees. But, um, yeah, they're both quality players. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see the, the both of them running around at the same team. Um, good for Paddy to come back after everything he's gone through as well. So, 
um, yeah, good challenges. Um, yeah, each team's going to have a good defender, and that's what I look forward to playing each week. For sure. Um, but that's what makes your mark so important, and then when you go back and slot it through for a six-pointer, that's brilliant. Upcoming games, boys, round four action. This sees you boys coming up against the Tigers at the G on Saturday night at 7.25. They'll be smarting after their 33-point loss to St Kilda on Sunday. This game won't be without its challenges. Could see some Tigers returning from the sidelines, but then again, you'll be happy. No Dylan Grimes, hamstring for four weeks, so that's not so bad. Not so good for the Tigers, but good for you. Um, then round five, uh, take on the Ruse at Marvel at 4.20 for the annual Good Friday game, um, which is on April the 15th. So all I'll say is, because I know if I ask you questions about ins and outs and what do you think who's going to win and how you're going to like negate this and they go, well, who cares, you know... That's what the opinion's going to be. You know that you want to go out there and just give it your utmost. So all I'm going to say is best of luck, be the best you can be, enjoy your football, and that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, boys. Spin the wheel. This is a segment uh, which we like to call here at That's Good for Goody called Playing to Win. All right, playing to win it is. Um, so, Paul, what's going to happen here, uh, and, and Marie, I'll explain it to both of you, is uh, we've got a lovely wheel, which Sandy's going to turn around and show you and, and the boys up on the stage. There we go. So there's 11 uh, categories on this wheel, and there's 10 questions per category, all right? Whatever, whatever comes up is what you're going to have to answer those 10 questions on, all right, OK? So you've got things like, Sandy, if you could just hold it back around there, you've got things like Capitals and Country, TV show themes, uh, movie quotes, TV shows, AFL, VFL, Australiana, that sort of thing. All right, so we're going to see how much you know about general knowledge or maybe how much you don't know about anything. But we'll see how all that goes. So what's going to happen, Paul, Aaron is going to be playing on your behalf to keep score for you, all right, which is pretty cool. And then Marita... Guess what? Josh Dunkley is going to be looking after you scoring as well. So we're really elaborate here, Aaron. We go all out. This is our scoring system, OK? It's a score paddle. It's a ping pong. Um, Next generation. With some... Yes, needs no explanation. It's all there. Um, so let's... We've already introduced it. Let's spin the wheel and see... Uh, I'll ask. I'll ask first. Who'd like to go first? Is it the ladies' first scenario? Ladies first. You'd like to do that? Thank you, Paul. So, Marita, you're going to be going first. Let's see what uh, segment you're going to be... Showing us everything you know about. I love it when you spin it long. Grand final winners. Grand final winners. Wow. Okay. Grand final winners. What can we do here? Let's have a look. Can I just get a drink? Yes, mate. Absolutely. You can go to the toilet if you want. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks so much. How cute is that? Uh, Marita, you're all, you're all up here on your own, so it's all cool. I've, I've finally find that what I'm looking for. What I'm going to do here, Marita, is I'm going to give you grand final winners, and you need to tell me either what year that, that they won the grand final, or I can give you the club. No, I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. I'll, I'm just going to give you the year, and you have to tell me the club that won the grand final. Does that make sense? Yeah, good. All right, so as soon as you uh, think you know it, just uh, spit it out and Josh is going to keep score. So here comes your first one. Who won the, uh, the grand final in 2016? Bulldogs. Yes, all right. Off to a flyer. <laughs> Excellent. Who won the grand final in 2008? No help from the audience, please. Um, so, yeah, who won the grand final in 2008? Geelong? No, it was Hawthorne, thanks to the person who screamed out Geelong for her. Don't listen to the audience, they won't help you. Um, who won the grand final in 2005? Uh, Collingwood? Collingwood? No, it was Sydney, mm. bad luck. Who won the grand final in 2003? Uh, West Coast? No, it was Brisbane, bad mm. luck. Uh, who won the grand final in 2004? West Coast? No, it was Port Adelaide. Mm. You're doing really well here, honey. Uh, who won the uh, grand final in 2015? That was... No, it wasn't West Coast. They train Hawthorne? close to here. Hawthorne. Yes! Yeah. Hawthorne it is. Well done. Beautiful. Who won the grand final in 2012? That was... Sydney? Yes. Well done. Beautiful. Who won it in 2009? Okay, now that was uh, Geelong. Yes, well done. Geelong it was. Thank you. Uh, we have one point to table 52. Um, who won the grand final in 2001? Oh, 
God, you're making it hard here. Um, that would have been not Essendon because they were uh, Hawthorne. No, it was Brisbane. Mm. Bad luck. Uh, you've got a total score of four. You've said this team a fair bit tonight. Let's see if you can get this one. Who won the grand final in 2006? Who have I said a lot? Um, West Coast. Yes. Well done. <laughs> total score of five. Marina, you champion. Well done. All right. Uh, let's get Sandy back in to spin the wheel. Paul, you must be excited by now. Absolutely right. Excellent. Absolutely <laughs> right. Stuff. I love it. Champion spin it away, Sandy. Here. Okay. Aaron's sitting up here going, I don't know what I'm doing here tonight, but <laughs> this is really interesting. What have we got? Australiana. Australiana. All right. Well, I can find that one straight away. Um, you'd know a fair bit about Australia, wouldn't you, mate? Oh, I should do, yeah. Yeah, good. I like I that. So. Let's see how you go here then. Uh, Aaron's going to be keeping score for you. What are the three colours of the Aboriginal flag? Black, yellow and red. Well done. Congratulations. You're off the mark. How many stars are there on the Australian flag? Six. Well done. Six it is. How many states and territories are there in Australia? Nine. Uh, states and territories? States and territories. Yeah. Do you want to break, a, make it, break it down for me? Uh, oh, you want to know how many states? Yeah. And then territories? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, seven states and two territories. Six states, two territories. Oh. Okay. Mm. What Australian landmark is referred to as the coat hanger? Oh, um, Sydney Harbour Bridge. Co excellent. Well done. Uh, when the Australian and New Zealand troops landed on the shores of Gallipoli, what date do we com commemorate this day on and what is it called? Remembrance Day. Is that your answer? Yes. Uh, no. no. Anzac Day. Anzac Day. April 25th, 1915. When did the first fleet arrive in Australia? Date and year, please. <laughs> um... 1778. Ooh. Um, date? Oh, sugar. January... I'll say 26. You'd have to be right, because it is, it is Australia Day, January the 26th, but it was 1788. 88. Mm. OK. Are we paying it? We'll, we'll give you a point, though. You, you did really well, mate. You did really well. <laughs> That you, well, obviously, you didn't wag school that day, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> what animals are on the Australian coat of arms? That's the emu and the kangaroo. Excellent. And do you know why that we have got the emu and the kangaroo on the, on the coat of arms? Uh, Out of curiosity. Do I know why? Because mm. um, they're an Australian delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not no. bad, Paul. I like that. <laughs> it's actually because they're the only animals that um, they, don't, they can't walk backwards, they can't. Okay. so they don't take a backward step. <laughs> not bad. All right. <laughs> Um, what plant is the floral emblem of Australia? The floral emblem of Australia? Mm. Mm. Um, uh, d the banks here? No. It's, a, it's all close. It starts with a W. It's a wattle. Wattle. Um, so we're sitting on five apiece, all right? So scores are level. You've got two questions to go, Paul. Right. Kirribilli House is in which city? Sydney. Correct. What was previously known as Van Diemen's Land? Tasmania. Well done. You got a total score of seven. You are our winner. Congratulations. Thank you. You've won play to win. <laughs> Bloody fantastic. Uh, listen, Paul, uh, as first prize this evening, you've won two tickets to go and see Richmond versus Western Bulldogs at the MCG on Saturday, April the 9th at 7.25pm. Congratulations. Well done. Now, Marita... You've, you've actually got the choice, my dear. I've got two games for you to go and see. You can choose which one you want. I'm sorry it's not Richmond versus Western Bulldogs. That was for the winner. Um, but it is Collingwood versus West Coast at Marvel on Saturday, April the 9th at 4.35. Or it's Hawthorne versus St Kilda at the G on Sunday, April the 10th at 3.20. Would you like two tickets to either of those two? Yeah, Hawthorne. They're yours. Congratulations. Thanks for playing. Playing to win. Well done. Well done. We'll introduce the segment. It's called Simply the Best. All right. Here we go. Um, so you boys are going to be keeping score for them again, all right? And we're going to uh, get the boys down the front to test their buzzers. So, Paul, could you test your buzzer just by um, expressing your name into the microphone for me? Say, hello, Paul. Oh, hello. Yeah, in here. Oh, hey, bro. Yeah. Paul. So... 
That, you, uh, your name's Paul, isn't it? No, it's Brown. Oh. <laughs> no wonder then. No wonder he's not saying it. I oh, know you said it. I, I just took it there. Yeah. That's Brad. That's, is that Paul? That's Mason. No, right. oh, see, I didn't have the... Yeah. There you go. Paul, do you want to come up and play again? No, no, no. It's all right. Okay, we've got it all sorted. Brad and Mason. So, Brad, could you test your buzzer for me, please? Yep. Brad. Excellent. And Mason, would you mind testing yours? Mason. Excellent. They're both working. I love it. You guys are great. Uh, uh, ten times better than the bloody host, I'll tell you. Um, so what's going to happen, boys? As soon as I ask the question, I need you boys just to chime in with your buzzer. And, and if you know the correct answer, the boys are going to keep score for you. And you'll win a prize. Are you both ready to go? Yep. Excellent. Here we go. How many premierships has your club won? Mason. Mason. Correct, mate. Well done. How many times has your team played in a losing grand final? Brad? Oh. oh, Brad? Uh, is it two? No. Ma Mason, do you want to have a go? One. Exactly, it is one. Congratulations. Who is your team's captain? Brad. Brad? Marcus Bontepelli. Excellent, you're on the board. Who wears the number seven at your club? Mason. Mason. Good boy, well done. How many members does your club currently have closest to within a thousand? Mason. Mason. 54,000. Oh, not bad. Not correct. Brad, do you want to have a go? Uh, it was 47,000. You can take it. 45,503. Uh, where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and, away, home and away season last year? Mason. Mason. Fifth. Good boy. Well done. How many games did your team win last year at the end of the home and away season? Brad. Yes, Brad? Uh, I believe it's 15. Yes, it is. Congratulations. Well done. What year did your team last win a grand final? Mason. And who? Ma ooh, Mason. Uh, 2016. Good. And who was it against? Sydney. Yes, it was. Well done. Uh, how many points did you win that grand final by? Brad. Brad? 22 points. Yes, correct. Well done. Who was the last Western Bulldogs player to win a Norm Smith medal? Brad. Mason. Ooh. Ooh. JJ. Yes, all right. <laughs> He's not waiting. He's coming straight in. Jason Johannesson. And what year was it, just coincidentally? Mason? 2016. Yes, well, well done. Good boy. Uh, two points. This is for two points. We're sitting on six versus four, Brad, so let's not get shown up here. All right. Um, who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2021? Mason. And how many goals did they kick, Mason? Uh, please tell me who it was and how many goals. Aaron Norton, 47? Oh, no, Josh Bruce. No, no. Brad, would you like to have a go? Yep, uh, Josh Bruce. Yes. He kicked 48 goals, I think Spot it was. on, mate. Well done. There's that two points. Good stuff. Well, oh, it's getting down to the wire now, boys. This is for three points. Who was the last Western Bulldogs player to win a Brownlow medal? What year and how many votes did they poll? Brad? Yes, Brad. Uh, uh, no, it's Adam Cootie in 2008. And I think it was 28 uh, votes. Hang on, could you say it again? Adam Cooney. Yes. In two, what year? 2008. Yes. And how many votes? I think it was 28 votes. I can give you two points. Can you tell me how many votes, Mason? He won it? 20, 28, 6? Uh, no, it was 24. So two points to you, Brad. Um, score, what are we sitting on? 8 versus 6. Oh. Here we go, boys. What year was the last Western? Uh, what year was the Western Bulldogs established? Was it A, 1826, B, 1926, or C, 1876? Mason. A Mason. 1926. 1926. No, mm -hmm. no, it was 1876. We have a winner. His name is Brad. Brad, well done. Good stuff. That's a good little win, Brad. Um, Mason, you don't go empty-handed. There's a football for you. All right. We might get that oh, sign for the yeah. boys for you. Brad, you're our winner. 249 bucks worth of uh, noise-cancelling headphones from Yamaha. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. And look at this. How good's that? Wow. So well done, mate. Look at this. Mason, it doesn't get any better. It really doesn't. Uh, let's read it out while we're here. Simply the Best was proudly brought to you by Yamaha and the Big Picture People. They're the experts in surround sound home theatre technology. The Big Picture People located in Hoppers Crossing, Clyde North, Water Garden, South Morang, Cheltenham and the Gold Coast. Congratulations. You are Simply the Best. <laughs> That's great, boys. Well done. Oh, brilliant. Love it. All right. Um, 
No more contestants. That's it. Just you can relax and enjoy yourself from here on in. I'm going to ask you guys a series of questions. You just answer them however you feel free. We're going to introduce it. It's called What Can I Say? Which one of the following things gets you pumped the most before a game? Is it the smell of deep heat, fresh cut grass, pulling on a jumper, strapping on the boots, a footy in your hands, or the sound of the crowd? Definitely not deep heat for me. Um, Adam Traw loves putting it on two minutes before we run out, and it it's always reminds me of local club oh, really? seniors, and <laughs> yeah. it, just, it gets to me. But for yeah. me, probably... Probably so the grass, to be honest. Like, okay. my first initial, when I get to the ground, go out and have a walk around the ground yeah. um, when the stadium's still empty. Yeah. Um, something about that, looking around and, yeah, just being out there is nice. Nice. I like it. Good. Excellent. Uh, mine would be pulling on the footy jumper. Ah, yeah. good. All when right. we get back in from our warm-up, we pull on the jumpers. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, are you happy to see the banners back? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Good. They're awesome. The siren is gone. You need a goal to win the game. Who do you hope has got the ball in their hands to win it for you? Um, I'm going to go a left field one. Yeah. Zane Cordy. Oh, okay. Wow. Because yeah, right. I think he's a good set shot at goal. Mm -hmm. But anything further than 40 metres out, not Zane Cordy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to back myself in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. They all wanted to hear that. <laughs> I could see that. Really well wed. Really well wed. Um, Western Bulldog supporters are? Passionate. Passionate. Caring. Caring. Oh, nice. You're going to win fans here, man. Uh, which AFL club do you like to beat the most? Oh, it's got to be the Giants, doesn't it? <laughs> but now, it's sort of Melbourne would be nice too. Yeah. I've got to say Melbourne. Yeah, yeah all right. Good. Uh, do you prefer a day or a twilight grand final? Oh, you've had both. Yeah. I mean, twilight was pretty cool. Yeah. Perth was pretty good. Like, it was an unbelievable experience. Obviously, we didn't win, but... It was pretty cool over there and the way that it all happened, the lead up and things like that was yeah. awesome. But I, I'm a traditionalist, so daytime. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same. Twilight was good back in Perth. Um, but, yeah, I can't yeah. get over just yeah. the yeah, two o'clock start. I reckon it's perfect. Yep, yeah. yeah, good. Um, you've been reincarnated as an animal. What sort of an animal would you like to come back as? An eagle. An eagle. Oh, I like it. Yep. yep. Um... All the coaches call me a grudel because of my hair. It's nice and curly, but um, I'm not sure. Do you want to be a dog, though? No, I don't, but um, <laughs> some sort of... <laughs> that, was that was on cue. That was nice. Um, all right, some sort of fish, maybe like a marlin or fish or something? Oh, yeah. yeah, nice. Wow. Nice. Okay. All right. Nice. Um, who's the most cultured down at the club or who thinks they are? Who's the most positive? Cultured. Cultured. Ooh. Um, Cody Waitman. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I think wow. He's very, okay. he's very arty into his art sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Okay, good. Good one. Um, probably maybe Libba. Libba, yeah. yes. You might yeah. think he's just wearing, wearing weird clothes, but yeah. that's just him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his art, his tattoo art, yeah, that's certainly. Mm -mm. Um, who's the funniest bloke at the club or who thinks they are? Oh, who thinks they are? Probably someone like Latham Vandermeer thinks he is. <laughs> right. But he's not, obviously. <laughs> I'll give you this early tip. Um, who's the funniest? A lot of people... I, I rate Jack like, McRae. Like, very um, dry sense of Yeah, humor. very dry, like quiet. But um, he has that like confident arrogance about him. Yeah. That's just, it's just funny when he like, yeah, says cool. stuff. Good. All right. Being an AFL footballer to you is? Oh, it's a childhood dream. So Beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, just special. Yeah, yeah nice. Uh, who's a bit tight with their money at the club? Speak freely here, boys. It's, it's got to be the same person. Mitch Wallace? No, Toby. <laughs> Toby's bad. Yeah. But Mitch, Mitch Wallace has a nickname, Wallet, because... Uh, yeah, 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 right. But sometimes... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, OK. His I'm family looking. background, you know, he's, he's got a bit of cash. <laughs> <laughs> In your opinion, who down at the club has got the most swagger? Or, again, who thinks they have? <laughs> Who thinks they have? Probably Baz. Yeah. It's probably fair, though, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's cotton on everywhere. Um, if, uh, you've been given the opportunity to do only one of the following things. Parachute out of a plane, take a hot lap in a V8 supercar, go, go hot air ballooning or swim with the sharks. Which one are you choosing? Oh, 
I hate sharks. <coughs> but I reckon it'd be pretty cool to do it. Yeah. Um, V8 supercar for me. Okay, good. I like all of them, to be honest. Yeah. Um, haven't done any of them. But um, probably parachute out of the plane, yeah. Yeah, cause I, I just booked that today. I'm doing that in the next week or so. Uh, so it's scary. Yeah, it'd be yeah, special. Yeah, I'm hanging out for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we may not see me anymore, so. Um, what is your favourite ground to play on around Australia apart from the MCG? Either Adelaide Oval or Optus. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to say Adelaide. Yeah. All right. Especially Good. against Port Adelaide. They do it really well. Yeah. Pre game. Um, playing for the Western Bulldogs is. An honour? Yeah. An honour. An honour. Oh, like that. You've been told you're about to go into lockdown. What's the one thing that you make sure you take with you? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, shit. I don't know, probably a full fridge. You'll eat a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Adzi, for sure. <laughs> Love and marriage, love and marriage. Nice. Um, this question, very relevant for you. What's better, Mark or goal of the year? No, I'm going to say Mark. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, hopefully I win it. Yeah, good, good. Goal of the year for me. All right. When, f when filling up with petrol, do you round it off to an even amount? Yes, I do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the same. All right. Uh, who's your Brownlow tip for 2022? Creeper. <laughs> yeah, he started pretty well, hasn't he? Yes. Um, six votes already? Nine, I reckon. I'm going to say... Yeah. I'll <laughs> oh, back uh, Lockie Neal again. Okay, all right. Um, Western Bulldogs at the end of the home and away season this year will finish? Top four. Top four. Top four. Top four, good. Uh, do you like being interviewed prior to or during the game? Interviewed? Yes. Uh, I did one during the game last week. Probably prior. Prior. Yeah, yeah I'd be the same. I yeah. wouldn't remember what I said yeah. during the game, I don't think. <laughs> okay. Um, are you superstitious in regards to your preparation? Not really. I used to be yeah. a lot, but yeah. no, not now. No. You would have some, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, one thing I do is so uh, we get off the our first warm-up, we come back in, all the other boys put their jumpers on. Oh, we do too. He's the only one that yeah. leaves it off. And then I still leave my warm-up jumper on until we complete the final warm-up and then it's like one or two minutes before we run out and then I get changed. Wow. Um, it's just something that I've always done even um, in junior footy. Yeah, right. Like back in under 18. So, um, yeah. so yeah, if you see me in the rooms, on the other, you think I might be emergency, but I'm still fine. <laughs> I just haven't changed yet. Later. Nice. Excellent. All right. Um, you're a contestant on a re reality TV show. What sort of a show is it? Oh. All the girls are thinking Bachelor, I think. Yeah. <laughs> For Naughty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like something. The Survivor. I yeah. reckon that'd okay. be a cool show to go on. Yep. Yeah. Josh is like Love Island. <laughs> no way. No way. Survivor would be cool. Something like that. Something. Yeah, good. Okay. Do you prefer to see the coach on the bench or in the box? <laughs> yeah, it depends on what mood he's in. <laughs> if uh, we're winning, yeah, on the, on the bench for sure. But if we're losing, yeah, in the box. He's pretty good though, Bevo. He comes down and he talks to us in a constructive way. It's not, yeah. He doesn't really give us many sprays. Which is oh, good. I love him. He's beautiful. Yep. Um, yeah, probably, I'd say box. Um, he doesn't come down to the ground too often. Yeah, um, yeah maybe early before the end of a break or something, but no, he's pretty good. Good. Uh, who does their hair the most at the club? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have always to, flicking yeah. it back. And <laughs> it's too curly these days. <laughs> I would say me or Baz, probably. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I saw on, I don't know whether you, maybe you follow the AFL on Instagram, did you see that young baby with the headband yeah, on? Yeah, that was pretty cute. I um, thought that was... Yeah, it warms the awesome. when you see, yeah. see things like that. No, that was good, because there's a question coming up that will relate to that. Um, in reflection, how much do you remember about your first game of AFL? I remember a fair bit. Okay. I, there was a moment for me when, because I was obviously first game, and the year before, Nat Fife had won the Brownlow, and I played, I debuted against Fremantle in round one 2016, and I lined up on him at centre bounce, and he just made me look like an idiot, <laughs> pretty much, essentially, and just threw me out of the way, and I was just like, how embarrassing is that? Wow. All right. 
yeah, live right. on TV. So, oh, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, mine was, it was special, obviously, the debut, but it was pretty horrific night for the club. Yeah, um, 2018 round one in Canberra. Special to have my family and my brother fly over from WA, but um, once it bounced, the ball bounced, it was pretty grim. Liver did his ACL, Crows oh. did his, his MCL. Me, yeah, MCL. Yeah. Got done by 83. Oh. Um, spent the whole day getting it looked, kicked over my head because oh. um, I was a defender back then. So, yeah, right. Um, wow. But yeah, it's still cool. But. Can I ask you, just while we're on that subject, in relation to Tex Wanganine with the Western Bulldogs the other week, they brought him in as an emergency. Oh, he was a sub. Do you think, is that, would you, do you have any thoughts on... Oh, you know, first game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it'd obviously be great to start on the field mm. or start on in the 22. Um, yeah, well, I think it should be a rule. Like, yeah. if you're playing your first game of footy, you shouldn't be the sub because mm. you want to experience the whole thing and be out there as soon as you can because imagine sitting on the bench for three quarters, three and a half quarters and then coming on. Yeah, yeah I'd be, I think I'd just be like, You'd be excited, but then you, if you didn't get on in the end, it, you'd be a bit deflated. Yeah, Because um, yeah. you've done all the hard work for so many years, and then, yeah. um, you know, you hope that you'll get another opportunity, you hope so. But, yeah, that first first time running out in the field and then you sit on the bench the whole Absolutely. game doesn't sit right. For sure, thank you. Um, if there was one form of entertainment, listening or viewing, which one would you choose? Viewing. Viewing, Okay. Yeah, I'm viewing as well. Yeah, all right, good. You're applying for a position as a footballer similar to a job interview. What do you write down about yourself? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm going to give it Josh Joshua Hanson, good looking. Nah, I would just say that I'd be a hard worker, yes. things like that. Diligent, yes. Diligent. Yeah. Um, Leader, team player. Yeah, just do everything that they need me to do to get the job done. Bloody awesome. Excellent. You got the job. Aaron? Competitive. Yep. Um, hard worker. Yeah. Um, can jump and get anything off the top shelves that they need. <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be about it. Very nice. Last two questions here for you, boys. Um, this relates to what I was just talking about before. What do you think when you see a poster or merchandise of yourself? I don't get many. <laughs> <laughs> I just sort of laugh. I think um, it's always funny when I go back home to WA and um, I'm just hanging out with my schoolmates yeah. and um, they always just love pointing it out. <laughs> but it's, yeah, for like, I think you just sort of, you don't notice it probably as much yeah. until you're around people that don't see it all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, they it's sort surreal. of just laugh and take the piss out of me and think it's funny. Yeah, cool. Uh, and this relates to the, uh, what I was just speaking about with the Instagram post. What is your reaction when you see a kid with your number on their back? Yeah, that's pretty special. I think you have a connection straight away. I just saw number one over there. He's got Adzi's number on the back. So, Oh, there you go. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. You'll have to swap it over, mate. Sack. <laughs> We're best mates. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is. It's special yeah. and it's awesome yeah. um, to be... Obviously, growing up as a kid, you, you had role models. You had people that you looked up to and people that you wore their number on your back. So... To have that um, influence on someone, an individual, is pretty special. That's great. Wonderful answer, Aaron. Yeah, um, I'm the same. I think, looking back, I was a college supporter. Used to wear the number 13 for Daisy Thomas on my back and was nuts for him. So, yeah, when you, you go to clinics or schools yeah. and, you know, nights like this and you see someone wearing your, your number, um, just think back of, you know, how much joy you had watching those players yeah. and think that, you know, hopefully you're doing the same for that person. Love those answers. Put your hands together from ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, but more importantly, thanks to everyone that participated in the night. Thanks so much for coming along and being part of this evening. It's always wonderful to do a show. I know it's not in uh, Bulldog heartland, but to see all you lovely fans come over and, and witness what we did tonight was, uh, it was truly great. So thank you for all of that. I just want to uh, allude to the fact, I said so off the top of the show, that we do these shows every Wednesday night live from the Mulgrave Country Club, and we take two current day players from each of the 10 Victorian teams. Next week on the show, April the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that anticipation. Uh, April the 13th, we've got Carlton's yeah. Sam Doherty and Jack Silvani. Uh, then on April the 20th, we've got Collingwood's Jack Ginnivan and still Sidebottom, followed up by Hawthorne's uh, Changuath Jaith 
uh, better known as CJ, uh, as he's commonly referred to, and James Sicily on April the 27th. Remember, you can only get your tickets through the That's Good For Footy website, or you can get them on the links when they go up on the That's Good For Footy Facebook page. It's pretty simple to do all of that. Um, the shows are recorded live at the Mulgrave Country Club. Thank you very much to Sam, my PA and audio guy, and to the lovely Sandy. If you can put your hands together for them. If you'd like to be kept informed of the shows, the next time we do a Western Bulldog show, I'm so, so hopeful that we can get Marcus Bonapelli along. And if we do, I'm pretty sure that this place would be rocking. Um, but uh, Aaron said he's going to talk to him when he gets to the club tomorrow, which is fantastic. I really appreciate you doing that. Um, yeah, good luck, Damo, he says. <laughs> Don't put me in that. Um, but if we do do another Western Bulldogs show, you've got to get onto the, the That's Good Footy Facebook page, like the page, go on and tell us who you barrack for, and then we can send you out links and, and you will know who's going to be coming up on them. But whilst you're here and you're all in such a good mood, could you please put your hands together for the lovely Aaron North? And the super wonderful Josh Dunkley. It's always a pleasure uh, doing the shows, but you make the, the, the job just even more pleasant. I can't thank you enough for what you bring to the table. Aaron, your first time tonight. Thanks so much, mate, for giving all of your attentiveness to the fans and being so forthright and, and so candid. It was wonderful. Did you enjoy yourself? Is it what you expected? Yeah, I was, I was unsure. Josh, Josh made it sound pretty easy. And, um, yeah, great no, laugh I, I told him nothing. To <laughs> yeah. um, Good man. Nothing. Yeah, I can't say I've, I've been to Mulgrave out much. Um, <laughs> haven't experienced much of Melbourne. But, yeah. no, nah, I loved it. Um, yeah, thanks for, for all you coming out. And hopefully uh, another good season ahead. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank it's you. wonderful. Very well said. Very well said. Um, I just make, wanted to make sure that you guys have all had a good time. I hope you have. Have you? Thank you. Thanks very much for your support. My name's Damien. This has been the That's Good for Footy panel show. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you and good night. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.